Public comment for items not on the agenda. Do we have speaker cards for items on the agenda? Please yes. call the first speaker. Nancy Kraus. We have a call. Hold on, we have an announcement. Go ahead, Melissa. Well, a car up, up, I understand. Out here with parking lights on. Could you, Bill? Could you say it in the mic, please? Oh. Can't you hear me? No. <laughs> Come on. I just want to tell you, there's a, a Volvo out in this parking lot out here, and it's got its, its parking lights are on. Thank you, Bill. It's a beautiful Volvo. It's like somebody can it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Nancy Krause. Good evening, uh, Mayor Medina and members of the council. Um, in my capacity as providing services to San Bruno Park School District, I wanted to share with you a couple of announcements this evening. Um, effective July 1st, the district appointed an interim superintendent for this school year, Dr. Sharon Camberg, and there will be a meet and greet for the community to welcome Dr. Camberg on September 3rd here at the Senior Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And I want to thank the Community Services Department for the help they've provided in, in with the arrangements for this. Um, I also want to share with you that this Thursday is the last day of the district's Big Lift Inspiring Summers program for rising kindergartners through rising second graders, which is funded by a grant from the Big Lift and designed to give these young scholars a bridge to their next grade in school. To date, the district has received over $1 million in Big Lift funding for early literacy endeavors in San Bruno. We welcome the council and the city staff to stop by Bel Air this Thursday, either for the community breakfast from 8 to 8.30, the petting zoo from 9 to 11, or the closing ceremony at 11 a.m. in which all students will participate. We want the council to know that city departments have been amazing in supporting preschool throughout the year and the inspiring summer program with their time and activities, including San Bruno Library, Police and Fire, Public Works, and Recology San Bruno. Thank you, Mayor Medina, for visiting and reading to the children, and you, Vice Mayor O'Connell, for volunteering to serve these past three years on the district's Big Lift Collaborative, providing important insight on early childhood education for San Bruno children. We are the city with a heart, and when we pull together on behalf of San Bruno children, wonderful things happen for them. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And next speaker, please. John Barrelier. And then I just got informed that the lights on the um, podium are broken. So Melissa is keeping time. She'll give Hi, you 30 seconds. Hi, my name is John Barrelier. We're going to go the I've old been looking way. for extra funds or funds that you may have overlooked so that we could have the possibility of hiring Kathy Schmidt as a leader down here, exercise leader. Uh, under the Inf Freedom of Information Act, the California Public Records Act, I asked for uh, the cost of sending one fire truck shopping when shopping's available either by phone or through the internet. I didn't see the logic of that. Now, with the firemen at the firehouse are listening, I want you to know that I hold you in the highest esteem. You're courageous, you have excellent equipment and excellent training. But don't, I don't give you a buy on the safety of my grandchild. If you're not there, you can't be a rescuer. If you're late, you can't be heroic. I passed out some cartoons, maybe some of you got it, that's simply uh, a man on a hammock between two posts and he says, technically, I'm guarding two posts. You can't be in two places at once. You're here, you're not home watching your kids. Now I broke this down as far as the finances were concerned. I allowed one truck, half hour shopping, three men at $75 an hour, that's with benefits, for half an hour. I figured it cost $133.50 per trip if you count the gas, I allowed $6 for gas and $15 for insurance. That's $48,727.50. Oh, but we have two firehouses and two trucks. 
That's $97,000 and 455, $97,455. That's a lot of money. Now, in addition to the money, there's a safety factor. You cannot be in two places at once. In 2012, a little boy and his grandmother died in a fire that was two minutes from the firehouse on Skyline. At that time, I asked for the report, the fire report, under the same Freedom of Information Act. It is still not forthcoming. I asked for it again last week. I think it's important to address this. Thank you. Linda Freitas. And as, as Mrs. Freitas is coming up, Ms. Berler, you have brought up that before, and I attended the funeral of those two folks. And when we last talked about this, at, at, I'm, I'm at, sorry, I'm at a disadvantage. I, have a, sort of I apologize, I, I didn't realize. I don't have to listen to you. I don't okay. that way, but I can't hear you. No, no problem, sir. Okay. All I'm just saying is, you brought that up before about the two that passed away and I had gone to their funeral. And at that time too, and I had also said, please let's have respect for those folks because you did it days after they were laid to rest. And you're bringing that back. And I want to be sensitive to the families and those that lose loved ones in this community. And, and, I, and I know and I appreciate you complimenting the fire department in the beginning. And I appreciate you making that clear. Thank you. Mrs. Freitas. Linda Freitas, Magnolia Avenue. Mayor Bendina, council members, I wish to thank Councilman Marty Medina for the strength he showed by standing up for the future of our community. Thank you. I am saddened by the press displaying such bias on a project while not representing all of the true facts surrounding this project. Once again, as I have mentioned previously, we live 12 houses from the project and were never notified. We are also outside of the 600 foot expanded notice area. I'm aware they went 300 feet beyond the required area, but think for a minute, 425 units plus a 40,000 square foot grocery store on the busiest intersection in San Bruno and not being notified of a project while living 12 houses away. Any project this size will affect the entire community, so the outreach should be broadened. You have water bills going to every piece of property, and it's a simple fix. Add the info in the bill, provide a website, and then it's up to the residents to keep updated at their desire. Continue the notification to the area impacted, problem solved with little expense. It's frustrating to keep hearing that the neighborhood doesn't want it. The majority of the people keep saying and have said from the time of our knowledge, which was very late in the process of the project, it just needs to be scaled down and reduce the traffic this will generate. So no, the developer did nothing to help solve this problem. And if you thought eight to 16 units removed was a compromise, it was a joke. I cannot ever remember a project come before council the very first time from the planning commission that didn't go back for tweets, adjustments, etc. This was thought to be a rubber stamp and now we're here. No one in this city has given a darn for the 15 to 20 years that we have lived with the blight from this property owner and the city should be ashamed of themselves for not holding them to the laws that are on the books. So technically you don't really care about us and it's disheartening. That area has been a disgrace for years. There's laws on the books that could adjust that problem but we tend to just keep going on to new problems and not fixing them 15 years ago because personally, I think this was in the works. And so the bl more blight that we looked at, the easier it would have been to sell this project. But Marty, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you, because it was a very disturbing evening up until the end. We went home and many people w were in tears. We were ready to move out of a neighborhood that we raised our daughter in and lived in for 39 years, and my husband worked here for 34. I was an elected official in this city, worked in a neighboring municipality, and this is the treatment that we received. Nobody was even notified. If it wasn't for next door or our neighbors passing out flyers, we wouldn't have even known this was coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please. Marsha Glasner. 
and Melissa, you're welcome to let the speaker know when they get to 30 seconds. Okay. So just so that they can be aware. Hi, thank you, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Um, the last couple of days, I've been surprised and disappointed to see that San Bruno appears to have become the victim of a smear attack focused on the Mills Park project. I hope that any council members or staff who are contacted regarding this are taking every opportunity um, to set the record straight, including especially the request for a continuance to reach agreement with the, which the developer rejected. I sincerely believe a continuance could have resulted in a different outcome. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, please. Malcolm Robinson. I promise not to speak till 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Malcolm Robinson. I've lived in San Bruno 30 years now, and I've come to bring a petition to the city council, city manager, and the rec department. The finest place in San Bruno at 8.30 on any morning at this time of year is in the San Bruno pool. The San Bruno Pool is open to weekday water aerobics users just two months of the year. This year, water, morning water aerobics ends August 18th. That means weekday, mo <laughs> it's easy for me to say, weekday morning water aerobics happens just 17% of the year. Why is that? The San Bruno Pool just had its 60th birthday. I had to change my behavior at 60, and so should the San, San Bruno Pool. I have a petition here signed by 42 San Bruno pool users. It was taken last Saturday morning. Um, and we're all asking that you extend weekday morning water aerobics and longer into the pool season. The reasons to allow extended morning water aerobics to 922 and even beyond are as follows. First, it creates healthy citizenship. So many of us need to exercise in a pool. I blew out my knee last, about 10 years ago. So I need to exercise in a near weightless environment so that I don't you know, make further damage. A lot of older people have joint issues. So working in water, working out, you get range of motion and flexibility that you just don't get. And we can do things in water that we can't do on land anymore. Um, the water aerobic season has been extended in the past thanks to Carol Bonner. So if she was here, she would be supporting this. Practicality. No other water activity stops in the pool before 922. Why are weekday water aerobics customers punished with such a short period of time to have classes? Why would you deny use of this San Bruno asset for water aerobics users? Um, and again, best time of the year is September and October, and, and we're not even allowed to, to have any water aerobics except in the evenings, when it's usually the winds coming in. You guys know the weather here, I'm sure. Um, business perspective. It's a fixed asset. It's long paid for. I swam in a pool like that in Illinois, you know, 60 years ago. So it's, it, you know, it's not taking much money. San Bruno needs a new business plan for the pool. And this is especially important because you're talking about putting $50 million into a new seconds. rec center and pool. And, you know, from what I hear from the rec center, they're not going to change their business plan at all. So I would say, you know, this is a missed opportunity. Please support weekday water aerobics. We don't need instructors for the class. Most of us, I've been doing it five years there, most people know, you know what to do in the exercising routines. We just need water, um, the pool open, the lifeguard, and the commercial free music. So um, with that, I give you this petition. And please consider our request. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Next, please. Stephen Seymour. Hello, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, uh, hello Mayor Medina and City Council members. Um, I'm here tonight because I was um, troubled uh, that we were put in a position where we had, where, where, where Mills Park failed. I and many others want to see that area developed and we wanna see the transit corridor developed. Um, so I, I ask that you look at the public process and maybe see what can be done to tweak it. I was in every one of the Mills Park meetings over the three and a half year period of time, and I can tell you that uh, traffic was an issue. 
and the size of the project was an issue in every one of those meetings. Um, <clears throat> yet, <clears throat> in the beginning, the project was 330 units, and then later it became 425. I do know that they added a, a, a piece of property to the, to the um, overall uh, property. But still, the, the size uh, was never really addressed, and the traffic issues, in the beginning, there wasn't a grocery store on the corner. You put a grocery store on the corner of the busiest intersection in San Bruno, and if I read the reports right, um, that grocery store tripled the car uh, trips to and from that building. Uh, I mean, it's obvious that wherever we build, we're going to increase the traffic, but I'm not sure why we would want to increase it threefold on the Building A section, which is on uh, El Camino and San Bruno. Um, I know that every one of you wanted to see that project approved. Uh, that project would have brought a great deal of revenue to the city. We needed that project. I ask that you look at the way public meetings are done in the future so that we can work through these issues and we don't get to a meeting that lasts seven hours and goes until 2.30 in the morning. And then in the end, we can't get the kind of concessions that the public and the neighbors would have uh, seen um, uh, as the kind of concessions that, we, that they would have been happy with. You heard Linda Freitas tonight. I mean, listening to Linda, her story is uh, not unlike dozens of other people in the Mills Park area. And that's not seconds. the only place that we're going to develop. We're going to develop throughout San Bruno. There will be more meetings, more development. And I want to also thank Marty Bedina because he listened. He listened to the public. It's a shame that we got to a place where we had to deny such a, a project that would have benefited our city. So please look at the way the process is done in the future so that we don't have, so that all of you, so that we know and we're comfortable when we get to that place where the council members cast votes that we're going to approve a project that will benefit us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Sandra Perez Vargas. Hello. I have volunteered at the Senior Center for about the last 10 years, and I wanted to let everybody know that there's a big Elvis Presley party coming up this Saturday. There's tickets available still at the front desk, and there might be some left the day of the event. We have a great time. Manny puts on a great show, and sometimes you think, wow, that really is Elvis up there. He's a lot of fun, so I welcome everybody to come. I also want to thank Marty Medina for having the character and strength to deal with that intense press pressure he was under. I've seen few people stand up to pressure of a city manager, staff, the mayor, uh, another council member, and the developers hour after hour, and to have him wanting to vote for it. And nobody really wanting to give more than a couple apartments here and there. A lot of this was addressed, like everybody has said at the very beginning. I was, I, I believe, at all but one meeting. And it was just like, how is this going to affect us? And the developers really weren't that concerned how it's going to affect you. Just like people weren't that concerned when the minimum parking requirements were waived at the Aperture Apartments that are two blocks from my house. It just seems like there's a small group of people who are trying to run this city, and regardless of what happens, they're gonna get their way. We found out not too long ago at a council meeting, the former mayor, Jim Ruane, Connie Jackson, former city manager, were having back office deals with a Chinese restaurant to go against the original plan of that apartment. Instead of doing what we were told on the bottom floor retail, um, a coffee shop, a florist, that they were talking about a 200 seat restaurant with no parking. So when we're looking at an apartment like this, it's like, okay, so we know we're getting 425 apartments, but what don't we know? What has been discussed behind closed doors? I have a problem with that. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is my understanding of it. And, and if these areas, Mills Park, had been looked at by the former city mayor and other people, it wouldn't be falling apart. We wouldn't have 
these distressed areas like our downtown. So it would be really nice if everybody pulled together as a community and not just because their neighborhood is doing great, we don't worry about everybody else. So, so thank you, Marty Medina, because you've walked up and down this town with me and you've actually taken seriously our concerns. Thank you. Sandra, Sandra, you said Saturday, but you didn't mention a time, yeah. I don't oh. think. Seven to 10, and that you can part. get tickets <laughs> in advance, $12. 15 at the door, it's gonna have light snacks and a no host bar. Thank and you. we have a great time. Thank you. Next speaker. Wynn Greg. Good evening, I was here before talking about this when they had a closed door session. So I came back so I could be in front of all of you to know what's happening. California made it legal to liquefy a dead body in 2017. None of us have the right to vote on this. Our state assembly, Assemblyman Mullins, this area, he decided, he and Jerry Hill, to be able to liquefy a dead body and pour it down the drain. And this is instead of regular cremations. Now, Dr. Wynn Parker wrote chloramine causes collateral health damage, and he said we should have the right to vote what goes in our food and our water. When they added the ammonia to the drinking water, we didn't get to vote on that, did we? But they knew with his article, because it was written from the Federal Registry, which Pat Martell from Daly City gave it to him when she was on the Bosco Water Board and she was the head of the PUC. Anyway, she gave him that and he wrote, chloramine causes collateral health damage and they knew that it was gonna cause kidney failure, it was gonna increase all kinds of problems, liver failure, bladder problems, colon problems, <laughs> you know, cancer. And um, they put it in anyway. So now they're gonna do something and they're going to take a body and they're gonna cook it in water and lye and cook it at 375 degrees and pour it down the drain. If Milbray, who recycles their toilet water and pumps it into the aquifers, if they opened up an entrepreneur, opened up a water cremation, puts it in the ground, you drink well water. You'll be sucking it up and drinking it. So what we're doing is going to city councils and asking people not to allow water cremation businesses in your city. That would stop this dead in the tracks. I went to Congressman Swalwell's town hall meeting um, in Castro Valley and I asked for a federal law against cannibalism. So we need a federal law to stop this, which would stop it in its tracks again. But most of all, if you wanna go green and they don't wanna bury people anymore, in Sweden, they freeze dry dead bodies, crunch them into these coffee crystals, put them in an urn, stick them under a tree with their name on the tree. So if we can't put, do the coffin thing anymore, or do a fire cremation, I think it would be a lot better to freeze dry somebody's dead body and put it under a tree with your name on it than to do this. And they pass this law without us knowing. And if people don't get off their butts, we're allowing it to happen. I'm asking you to call you know, Mullins, your state assembly. I'm asking you to call um, Jerry Hill and ask him why they did this and not let the public know. This is the San Francisco Chronicle. It was in the Chronicle, the Sacramento Bee. Is it 30 seconds? 30. You have 30 seconds left. The Sacramento Bee, and it was on KQED Online. My sister wrote a paper. There's a lot of Catholics in this area. You got a Catholic church right down the street, St. Roberts. And my sister had written a letter about water cremations in the Catholic voice uh, this last week. And the Catholics are very concerned about this because they want a cremation that's in a place that you can go and pray there, and they didn't believe in... Uh, even in a fire cremation, sprinkle the ashes all over the place. Time. This would be drinking it as cannibalism. Please, ma'am, do something and call your legislators. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, please. Tim O'Brien. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I um, just wanted to publicly thank Marty for his. Um, for listening to the residents and standing up for them and um, taking the courage to make his vote uh, regarding the impact of the project. Uh, I'm for development, but I want it to be reasonable and to fit the community. And it just makes sense. So we, we have, it doesn't affect our quality of life as much. It will, no matter what. Um, but I just want to make sure that moving forward that we do consider the impact of each project. And I'd like to see, you know, it will help San Bruno prosper and make everybody, 
it's somewhat happy. Not everybody happy, but um, majority of us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Council. Thank you, members. Thank you, too. Sean Quinn. Good evening, council members. I'm here to uh, support Stephen Seymour and Mrs. Freitas and Mr. O'Brien uh, uh, to thank Marty Medina for casting his vote. I think uh, there, we should work out a way to get a continuance going. Uh, I think the, the city desperately needs this project, but there's a lot of misconception out there. Um, uh, even one uh, participant last week uh, in the meeting said if it was in his backyard, he probably wouldn't go for it. So uh, it's, we need to be mindful of everybody else in our neighborhoods. Just because we live in, in an area that's not affected doesn't mean uh, something shouldn't be done. There's uh, in that uh, chronicle uh piece that came out and there's a lot on next door uh, affordable housing and we're missing our quotas on that affordable housing is very very important uh, the states mandated it but the other thing is there is no fine from the state for not making your uh, your uh, your quotas uh, as of now uh, there's no bite to it. They have, they want everybody to have affordable housing, but they're not doing anything. So with that in mind, uh, Redwood City, um, Redwood City actually took uh, all their Airbnb money. Their put just became a law last April, and every bit of money they get from Airbnb goes to their affordable housing and that that uh, dollar amount at a minimum is about $40,000 a month and they're just starting. So they look to see that that, that part will grow and that's how they're uh, going after their affordable housing. So we might want to take a look. There's a lot of Airbnb in this city and uh, we might want to mirror what uh, Redwood City has done uh, that's minimal. They don't have uh, very much. 30 seconds. They don't have very much uh, uh, city participation because Airbnb actually collects all the money and pays it to them. So thank you. Thank you once again, Councilman Medina. Thank you, Sean, for your comments. Jim Ruane. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I hadn't planned on speaking this evening, but since I was called out individually by name, I feel I have to respond. I don't know where this wild notion came from about private backdoor meetings between myself and Connie Jackson, city manager, regarding the aperture. That's not true. Nothing like that ever occurred. So I just want to set the record straight. Anything I ever did for this city has been transparent, very transparent. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Jim. Any other speakers? Any other persons in the room wanting to speak on items that are not on the agenda? 